welcome and or welcome back to the channel. My name is Sarah and I talk about books in my basement and today we're just gonna do like a quick short video. I am in my comfy clothes, like my Halo Reach shirt. This shirt is from like 2010 when I worked at GameStop and this game came out. It is so comfortable. Anyway, I just wanted to chat with y'all some recent favorites and like the state of my reading right now because I didn't do a like goals video for this year on purpose. And I'll talk briefly on that. I'm gonna make this short so we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna start off with like my recent favorites. I know I've been doing longer monthly read videos. I'm breaking up my reading into segments. So when I finish a chunk of books, I do an update and then I piece them together for a mid and an end of the month wrap up sort of thing. Reads part one and two. That's what's easiest for me right now. And that's fine. But my husband suggested I do like a little short video where I talk about some of my favorites so far. And I think that's a great idea. And I thought it'd also give me a chance to, you know, update you to what's going on in the reading life. So off the top of the list, let me tell you about the book that I actually just finished. And I think it's going to be a favorite of the year. And that is Kindling by Tracy Chi. This was phenomenal. Uh, this is a YA fantasy. And this is an example of why I do try YA fantasy. Because sometimes an author will do something so creative and so unique that it really stands out. This is a Seven Samurais inspired book about seven young women who are kindling and in this in this world there was this great war and people are born with magic but it burns them out so using it eats their life force and they found that if they wait till these people are grown like 19 and 20 to enlist them in the army they only have a few months of life left to fight these wars so they thought it's a great idea to turn them into child soldiers so this entire war was fought in one with child soldiers, which is horrifying, but that's unfortunate. Uh, fortunately, the state of things at a lot of time. And this is following those seven children, young women, as they, you know, the war is over and they are looking for purpose. They're looking for home. They're looking to find family and do things they didn't get to do. And they end up coming together to save a small village. If you have watched Seven Samurais, which is a fantastic movie, by the way, I highly recommend that. Um, or the story, I think it's based off of, I can't remember that author's name. I have it sitting over there. I, I cannot tell you how amazing this book was. It's also written in, I think it's second person, where it's talking to you as the character. And just so good. There's a lot of dark things in here. People do die. Again, if you know Seven Samurais, you're gonna you're 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 gonna know being prepared going into this. And it deals with heavy topics, but I can't recommend it enough. I adored it. I am getting a copy. It's coming on Tuesday. I can't wait. I'm going to reread it when I get it so I can annotate it and highlight. Oh, it's, it is beautiful. It's fantastic. Uh, another favorite. Let's just. I just grab these cinnamon bun if you want a happy wholesome it, it literally on one of the covers for this is a wholesome cozy rpg lit rpg this is this is the book it has been out for a while so you've probably heard of it if you're in the lit rpg space at all indie space it's about a young girl named broccoli bunch and she gets isekai sent to a fantasy world she unlocks the class cinnamon bun which description literally says you are too pure for this world and she gets the cleaning skill and she uses that in unconventional ways to achieve her goals which include making friends and exploring the world. It's just a happy book. She could see from a stupid grin. I'm happy just thinking about it. <laughs> so that was another win. The Forgotten Beast of Eld. I adore this book. This is what I read as a kid. I have read it probably two to three times now. At least two. I think three. This is originally from, I believe, the 60s or the 70s, and it's being reprinted next week with beautiful interior art. This is what I would call an OG romanticy. If you like romanticy and you're interested in, like, actual harder science, harder fantasy with less romance, this would be a good stepping stone. It's a classic. It's got the classic tone. Uh, someone I talked to online uh, on Reddit, we were talking about this. She said reading it is a little bit like reading a fever dream, but it is fantastic. It's about a young woman, Sybil. She is a wizard. She lives high in her icy fortress with the Forgotten Beasts. 
she is tasked with raising a baby and when that baby becomes a young man he is drawn into war and she with him and it is absolutely wonderful a another fantastic female wizard sort of book is a flame in the north by Lilith st crow this i will tell you is dense <laughs> you have to work for it but the payoff is fantastic uh, our main character, Sol, is sent off as a weird guild to another clan after her brother kills a man. And she finds out that she is in the stuff that ballads are made of. She finds herself caught in the crosshairs between the north. Something evil is lurking there and coming down to wreak havoc. And she is going to stand in its way. Maybe, perhaps, if she could survive. It's Great. It's very Norse and Viking vibes. Highly recommend it. And finally, The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I really, really enjoyed this when I read it last month. I also really love the physical copy. It is a naked hardcover with like plants growing over it like it's a book. It's so good. So good. And this is a murder mystery. A man is found with a tree growing out of him like it erupts out of his body. <laughs> which is wild and then this is a fantasy world in which plants are sort of our main type of magic that we see plant mushroom fungal fungi that sort of thing and there are also these great beasts that are beating on the sea walls attempting to crawl into onto the continent and destroy and wreak havoc and all the while we're solving this mystery of why this man was murdered in a Sherlock and Holmes sort of setup with a young man and a woman. The woman is effectively blind and she reads and reads like, uh, with like for example, she reads with specialized augments that make her fingertips so sensitive she can read the ink on a page because of the indention it makes. And her assistant does all her legwork for her. It's great, I loved it. I'm so excited for the next book in the series because this is definitely kicking off a series and I can't wait. So as to like the state of things that I wanted to briefly touch on, uh, I am clearly not reading a ton of romance right now. <laughs> I attempted in the last like three or four months to read romanticy, fantasy romance. If you've watched many of my videos, I've talked about it frequently. I wanted to give it a try. I have decided I think I'm done. <laughs> I think I'm done. Uh, the last one I read was truly the, the nail in the coffin. Uh, that was a fade inked in blood comes out next week. I frankly don't recommend it. I have a lot of problems with the genre. I don't like... I saw someone, I think it was SFF180, linked an article about how the romanticy genre is a safe place for women to find their power in fantasy, and I, like him, heartily disagree. I found more sexism and misogyny and just horrible toxic people in that genre that I found in my 35 years of reading fantasy. <laughs> so 30 years of reading fantasy. So I think maybe I'll step back from uh, romanticy. I'll probably be putting less of an effort into it. I do still have some on my shelves that I want to read and plan to read. So I'll get to those at one Two, uh, I want to reread Crucial's Dart. I'm looking at my romance shelf. I want to reread Crucial's Dart because that is one that I know I enjoy and I have Blood Mercy by Vila Roth. I do want to read that as well because I believe that's a little more fantasy focused. But I'm done with that. F a romance is a large and being much more picky with like contemporary romances. So mainly we're going to be reading fantasy, science fiction, and I've been getting a lot more into indies. And I'm just, I'm very excited about that. That is the state of things from Blue Movie Forward in 2024. I'm hoping to ease back on ARCs uh, for now. We'll see what happens uh, because I had so many. My biggest project for the first part of the year was to read down my NetGalley. I had a score of like 68. The recommended score is 80%. So you, of the books that you request, you read and turn in reviews for 80% of those. At minimum, I am currently at 77, 76. And I'm very, very excited about that. So I'll continue to work on that. I'll still read these books before they come out because I do love doing it. I just want to make room for other stuff. But that's it. Just a short video. Less than 10 minutes, I'm hoping, <laughs> of some very recent favorites. The state of things. The romance is going to taper off. I'm done with that. Fant uh, romance itself, I will still be reading just in smaller chunks. And I 
think I'm going to be leaning more towards novellas and shorter romance books because those work the best for me. That's it for me today on this super short chatty video. Let me know what you guys have been up to. How was reading going? What are some recent favorites for you? And have you read any of these? Are you looking forward to kindling? Because again, read kindling. It's so good. It's, mm, chef's kiss. I adored it. Fantastic. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, y'all. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.